We are a city full of remarkable people who have done remarkable things. This is the story of a true civil rights pioneer. Back in 1969, Marsha P. Johnson helped spark the iconic Stonewall riots here in the city and the beginnings of the gay rights movement. Johnson would go on to found the first ever transgender rights organization and become a beloved figure in the Greenwich Village community. But her death 25 years ago still remains a mystery to some. The police department found that Johnson, whose body was found floating in the Hudson River, committed suicide. But those closest to her doubt that's the story. Her case is now the subject of the new documentary, The Death and Life of Marsha P. Johnson, which is directed by Academy Award-nominated filmmaker David France and makes its premiere on Netflix this October. Here's a look. I want to say it was the 4th of July. We were going to meet at midnight, but she never showed up. She was in danger. I was there when they pulled her out. Marsha was so full of life. Marsha P. Johnson was the Rosa Parks of the LGBT movement. Darling, I want my gay rights now! Her case has been cold for 25 years. I'm calling from the Anti-Violence Project here in New York City. I want to try to give Marsha justice. Marsha! Marsha! Street people and the drag queens were the vanguard of the movement. Stonewall, Marsha and I fought the cops off. We were in the streets turning over cars. The movement started the next day. Marsha was famous all around the world. But even famous people, cases go cold. And joining me now with more on this story is the film's director, David France, and Beverly Tillery, the executive director for the New York City Anti-Violence Project, which investigated Marsha's death. Welcome both to the show. Thanks okay. for having us. All right, so first starting off, for David, what was it about Marsha's story that made you feel not only is this worth revisiting, but it's worth making a documentary and bringing her story to light? Well, as you said, you know, she really was a central figure in the early LGBT movement, a, um, a pioneer in the question of uh, transgender rights. And, uh, and she, her death uh, 25 years ago uh, still remains a mystery and, and still weighs heavily on people's minds. The, the idea that she was uh, allowed to die without the proper response from authorities to investigate what happened to her. And, uh, we're in a time now when crimes against the transgender community are skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, there's an epidemic of crime, especially against transgender women of color. And I thought it, it would be time to go back and try to resurrect the case of Marsha's death uh, as a very strong kind of symbolic effort to bring attention to this new wave of crime and to, to underscore the need to address it kind of across the board. Now, of course, in this film, we meet uh, a woman named Vicky, and she is the one who sort of takes us to the re-examination of the case. She's with the Anti-Violence Project. Can you tell me a little bit about that organization, what it is they do, and why they exist? Sure. The New York City Anti-Violence Project was founded in 1980. Um, and really grew out of uh, community members in the LGBT community, particularly gay men, who were being attacked regularly and no one was paying attention. Um, and the organization responded in two ways, and still to this day, we both provide support for the survivors of violence in many ways, um, and we um, are activists and we organize folks in the community to make sure that there's proper attention that's going on to the violence that's happening um, and that there are um, policy and uh, programmatic responses so that we can end and address violence um, and not just uh, be in a situation always of responding. Well, David, you mentioned that part of the uh increased amount of uh, violence is towards trans women of color. And I'm wondering how much intersectionality plays into all of this, that these uh, individuals find themselves at this very difficult crossroads of race and gender and sexuality, et cetera. Is that part of what's making it so possible for society to sort of meh to their deaths? Of course it is. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's also a question of um, class, you know, and economy. And we have as a society, uh, pushed our transgender sisters especially, uh, but brothers as well, uh, to the margins of society. And if you are also a person of color, the likelihood of you being um, 
uh, discriminated against on every level is is increased, you know, a thousandfold. And we have a, a, a health crisis in that community. We've got a political crisis. We've got an educational crisis. And we've got a safety crisis. And all of those things have to be addressed simultaneously if we're going to pull together as a community and create a kind of a safety net uh, for everybody in our society. I don't want to give away the end of the film, but I do want to ask, do you know if we'll ever know exactly what happened to Marsha? I would like to think that we will know. Um, but uh, the bigger question I think that the film discovers, and I discovered as we were, we were going through this process, was that uh, in, in serious um, and significant ways, we all killed Marsha P. Johnson. We, we did it by not beginning or continuing the revolution that she began back in 1969, by not taking up her flag and, and marching forward to create the kind of uh, utopian society that she imagined, the kind of freedom and liberty that she cried out for initially and fought for all of her life. And until we do that, we really haven't um, honored her or brought, brought justice to her case. Um, one more question that I want to ask about uh, AVP, and that is that I understand that you guys are going to be awarding or honoring um, Vice President Joe Biden for legislation that he's passed specifically for the trans community. We are very excited that on October 11th, um, in just a few days, um, we are having our annual Courage Awards. And in those awards, we honor the activists and leaders and community members who have been at the forefront of uh, bringing forward the issues of violence in our community and helping to address them. And so David France, um, Victoria Cruz, and the crew of um, the film are going to be honored, as well as folks at Vice Media. And we're so um, thrilled to say that we're going to be able to honor Joe Biden as well. Um, and we worked with him um, years ago um, as the organization really pushed to make sure that the Violence Against Women Act was inclusive of LGBT um, rights and needs um, as it pertains to um, violence, um, which was the first of its kind mm -hmm. and groundbreaking. And uh, Vice President Biden has been a leader in fighting for LGBT rights throughout his career. So there's so many reasons to honor him. We're very excited. We hope people join us on October 11th. Um, they'll get to see David and Vicki Cruz. Um, okay. And also good to see Joe Biden. Well, listen, thank you both for joining me on the show and sharing this amazing film with us. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you. And just a note for those of you watching at home, if you want to find out more about the death and life of Marsha P. Johnson, including how you can watch the film, head on over to our website at metrofocus.org.